at this Holy Mass, we shall be praying for all your personal intentions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we've entered into the most holiest of all holy weeks. Palm Sunday, celebrating the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. With a crowd that was gathered around Jesus on that Palm Sunday, let us also together shout Hosanna to God in the highest. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the weary. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spitting. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like a flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word shall be, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord. Let him save him. Let him release him if this is his friend. Response. My, my God, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. Response. My, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. Response. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. 
you who fear the lord give him praise all sons of jacob give him glory revere him his right sons response my god my god why have you forsaken me saint paul to the philippians his state was divine yet christ jesus did not cling to his equality with god but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are and being as all men are he was humbler yet even to accepting death death on a cross but god raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names so that all beings in the heavens on earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of jesus and that every tongue should acclaim jesus christ as lord to the glory of god the father the word of the lord thanks be to god jesus christ was humbler yet even to accepting death death on a cross but god raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names the passion of our lord jesus christ according to matthew It will be Passover, as you know, in two days' time, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and made plans to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. They said, however, it must not be during the festivities. There must be no disturbance among the people. Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper when a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of most expensive ointment and poured it on his head as he was at table when they saw this the disciples were indignant and they said why this waste this could have been sold at high price and the money given to the poor Jesus noticed this and he said to them why are you upsetting this woman what she has done for me is one of the good works indeed you have the poor with you always but you will not always have me when she poured this ointment on my body she did it to prepare me for burial i tell you solemnly wherever in all the world this good news is proclaimed what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her then one of the toll the man called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said what are you prepared to give me if i hand him over to you they paid him 30 silver pieces and from that moment he looked for an opportunity to betray him now for the first day of the unleavened bread the disciples came to jesus and said where do you want us to prepare prepares for you the for you to eat the passover he replied go to so and so in the city and say to him the master says my time is near it is at your house that i am keeping the passover with my disciples the disciples did what jesus told them and prepared the passover when the evening came 
He was at the table with the twelve disciples, and while they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn. Not I, Lord, surely? He answered, Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to his fate, as the scripture says he will. But alas for that man, by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, who was to betray him, asked in his turn, Not I, Rabbi, surely? Jesus answered, They are your own words. No, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink, all of you, from this, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. From now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my Father. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith in me this night, for the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. At this Peter said, all, Though all lose faith in you, I will never lose faith. Jesus answered him, I tell you solemnly, this very night, before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus came with them to a small estate called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Stay here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and sadness came over him, and great distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake with me. And now going on a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass by me. Nevertheless, let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you had not the strength to keep awake with me one hour? You should be awake and praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cup cannot pass by without my drinking it, your will be done. And he came again back and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy. Leaving them there, he went away again and prayed for the third time, repeating the same words. Then he came back to the disciples and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. Now the hour has come when the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is already close at hand. He was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve, appeared, and with him a large number of men, armed with the swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the traitor had arranged a sign with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge. So he went straight up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, My friend, do what you are here for. Then they came forward, seized Jesus and took him in charge. At that, one of the followers of Jesus grasped his sword and drew it. He struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Jesus then said, Put your sword back, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, 
who would probably send more than 12 legions of angels to my defense. But then, how will the scriptures be fulfilled that say this is the way it must be? It was at this time that Jesus said to the crowds, Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I sat teaching in the temple day after day, and you never laid hands on me. Now all this happened to fulfill the prophecies in scripture. Then all the disciples deserted him and ran away. The men who had arrested Jesus led him up to the Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter followed him at a distance, and when he reached the high priest's palace, he went in and sat down with the attendants to see what the end would be. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus, however false, on which they might pass death sentence. But they could not find a way, though several Lying witness came forward. Eventually, two stepped forward and made a statement. This man said, I have power to destroy the temple of God and in three days build, up, build it up. The high priest then stood up and said to him, Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence this man are bringing against you? But Jesus was silent and the high priest said to him, I put you on oath by the living God to tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus answered, The words are your own. Moreover, I tell you that from this time onward, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, Yes, Dastamur, what need of witnesses have we now? There. You have just heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They answered, He deserves to die. Then they spat on his face and hit him with their fists. Others said, as they struck him, Play the prophet, Christ. Who hit you then? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You were you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of them all, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. And again with an oath he denied it. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, you are the one of them for sure. Why you answered you why you answered gives you away? Then he started calling down curses on himself and swearing. I do not know this man. At that moment the crop grew, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people met in council to bring about the death of Jesus. They had him bound and led him away to hand him over to Pilate, the governor. When he found that Jesus had been condemned, Judas, his betrayer, was filled with remorse and took the thirty pieces of silver back to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. They replied, What is that to us? This is your concern. And flinging down the silver pieces in the sanctuary he made of, and went and hanged himself. The chief priests picked up the silver pieces and said, It is against the Lord to put this into the treasury. It is blood money. So they discussed the matter and brought the potter's field with it as a graveyard for foreigners. And this is why the field is called the field of blood today. The words of prophet Jeremiah were then fulfilled. And they took the thirty silver pieces 
the sum at which the precious one was pierced by the children of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, just as the Lord directed me. Jesus then was brought before the governor, and the governor put it put to him this question: Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. I have nothing to do with this man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So, when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, what am I to do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Let him crucify. Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he has done? But they all shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people to a man shouted back, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he will release Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first cursed and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. Then they stripped him and made him wear scarlet cloth and having twisted some thorn, thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own cloth and they led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they reached a place called Golgotha, that is the place of skull, they gave him wine to drink. When they finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lot. And then sat down and stayed there keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the chart against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. 
He put trust in God. Now let God rescue him, if he wants him. For he did say, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour, there was darkness all over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get his sponge, which he dipped in a vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait, see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And this, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, In truth, this was the Son of God. And many women were there watching from a distance. The same woman who had followed Jesus from Galilee and looked after him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's son. When it was evening, there came a rich man of Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate thereupon ordered it to be handed over. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Now Mary of Magdala and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the sepulchre. Next day, that is when the preparation day was over, the chief priests and the Pharisees went in a body to Pilate and said to him, Your Excellency, we recall that this impostor said, While he was still alive, after three days I shall rise again. Therefore, give the order to have the scapulary kept secure until the third day. For fear his disciples, come and steal him away and tell the people, he has risen from the dead. This last piece of fraud would be worse than what went before. Pilate said to them, You may have your guards. Go and make all as secure as you know now. So they went and made the sepulchre secure, putting seals on the stone and mounting a guard. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, the first reading is the third suffering servant psalm taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah points of Jesus' conscious and active choice to remain faithful to his mission, namely his father's plan of salvation to save all humanity. Neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me. At the Last Supper, Jesus tells his disciples that their faith will be shaken. 
But the disciples deny this. When their faith is threatened and there is a cost involved, like the disciples, we quickly look to protect ourselves. In the present case, the disciples fled. Jesus' faith remains unshaken. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus says yes to doing his Father's will. And during his trial, he's even silent about the accusers who levy false allegations against him. Jesus is faithful to his Father's will and freely, willingly, and obediently gives up his spirit on the cross. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us about Jesus' passion. The gospel stops at the empty tomb, but St. Paul tells us about an even greater sign yet to come. That is, God exalts him. As Christ's disciples, my dear brothers and sisters, Palm Sunday invites us to personally reflect on who Jesus is to each one of us. In our daily lives, are others able to see Christ living in me? Like Jesus in our daily life, we need to learn to embrace death, that is a life of total self-giving, so that we can share in the very new life that he invites us to. And by placing our trust in Jesus, we can remain faithful in our commitment in following him. as we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into Kenya, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus shed his blood on the cross at Calvary for the forgiveness of sins. Trusting in his compassion and love, let us confidently bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the members of the Church that they may remain faithfully to follow following Christ. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the nations of the world struck by the pandemic of coronavirus that God may inspire the leadership and the people of goodwill to work selflessly for the welfare of their citizen. A response. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are suffering and near, nearing death, that they may know the peace of Christ and find comfort through all those who care for them. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the baptized Christians that they may emulate and obedient and faithfulness of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of exceeding goodness, by Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you revealed your great love for humanity. You are the prayers of your church and bring us to Easter joy. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Round that being who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Oswald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, that they are not worthy, that they should enter the Bible. But I say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe, I believe that you are present, that you are present in the most holy sacrament, in the most holy sacrament. I love you, I love you above all things, above all things, and I desire, and I desire to receive you, to receive you into my soul, into my soul. Since I cannot, since I cannot, at this moment, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually, come at least spiritually into my heart, into my heart. I embrace you, I embrace you as if you were already there, as if you were already there, and unite myself, and unite myself wholly to you, wholly to you. Never permit me, never permit me to be separated from you, to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they may take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 